Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at a very interesting kit here. This is the Murakumo Cloud Breaker kit. It's a really awesome design. One I've had in my backlog for a long, long, long time. Finally got around to building it and I want to show it to you guys in today's review. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, starting off, taking a look at the box art. There you got this beautiful imagery of the Cloudbreaker flying through the sky with that high gloss red armor on it, looking like a Ferrari of robots there. And just super detailed and really interesting design for this one, which is what drew me to the kit originally. And of course, it has that big massive Gatling gun right there on the front, which does look very cool as well. On the end of the box, we just got the same thing there, but you can see just how thick this box is. It's a very deep, very large box. On this side, we got to look at what the actual kit is going to look like here, just up on its base. Not in any action pose, you'll note. And so that is a little bit worrying. Let's take a look here on the other side where again, we just have a CG render. So the fact that it's not shown any action poses makes me wonder if it's able to do them very well. That's okay, we'll find out here in just a few minutes. Let's go ahead and take a look at all the contents first. Looks like we are gonna have some motorcycle decals, not a ton of them, but some markings on there, mostly in white, a couple in black and in red there. And for how much is in this kit, the manual feels very thin. It's like a typical, like very simple high grade manual. It's just a single, fold out page like that with all your instructions on the inside there you got your parts list we got some artwork here we'll take a look at the same artwork there on the front even on the back side it's just construction of the weapon so here on the inside you got some more photos of the kit the color guide and a decal guide over here on this side but that's it so not really too much here to see in the manual it's very simple all right, so first up here in this molded silver, a little bit softer runner is our poly caps for the kit. Also included on here is the ammo belt for the Gatling gun, as you can see. The A, B, and the C runners are gonna be all of our red armor, which is in a very interesting color red. It's not quite that like really bright, cheap, plasticky red feeling that you have with like a lot of Bandai red model kits. It does seem very similar to that, but it's just a little bit darker. So know, it's kind of hard to describe. Very interesting color red plastic here for this. And it's certainly not high gloss like it appears on the box art, which would have been nice. But again, considering the kit, I'm not too surprised by that. But that certainly would have been nice. The next few runners here, runners D, E, F, and G, are all of our mechanical parts. And this is all in a molded silver, which looks really nice. It's kind of like a darker silver, so it looks really good. Here's the E runner. We got two of those and a ton of really great detail on these parts, as you can see. Like some of them are just like simple mechanical parts for like the joints and things. But some of the areas where there's going to be exposed detail, you can see there's a lot of very nice little bits on some of these parts. Runner H we have two of, and it's in a kind of off-white cream color. Runner I here is a few parts in clear. Runner J is back to the molded silver color, and that's because we have the weapons parts looks like on here for the Gatling gun, which is exclusive to this version. There's also a white version of the kit that has a different weapon, so I'm guessing that this is the runner that's gonna be different depending on which version of the kit you get. Lastly, runner K here is just the pieces for the stand, which as you can see is there in clear. It looks good. All right guys, so here's the kit all built up and it's a very impressive kit. Definitely a bit of a mixed bag though, as you might have expected just from seeing the unboxing and just the fact that, you know, Plum, not necessarily the best known model kit company out there. I think it's definitely fair to say that the undoubtedly best aspect about this kit is just going to be just the way that it looks. It's just such a very cool design and very unique design that I think is going to make anybody who's really interested in this model kit kind of really, it's easier to ignore some of the cons of the kit when you have a model that just looks as good as this one does and it definitely looks amazing but there are some drawbacks so let's go ahead and get into that so obviously with these like massive binders out the back side it's not gonna be able to stand on its own so it's definitely essential that you use the base and the base is the first thing that we'll talk about here real quick because number one this piece here that goes on the top I snapped it in half when I plugged it onto there so be very careful with that I would glued it back in place but that's important for holding up the back end of it as you can see it kind of holds the kit at three points it's gonna be under the hips and then also under the arms of this kind of part that holds the binder there. But one really cool feature about the base is that there is a ball joint right here, which is pretty solid. It doesn't give you a ton of movement, but it will allow you to angle the kit slightly side to side a little bit there. You can sort of turn it 
and it is tight. I'm really nervous about this breaking, but you can angle it forward and back slightly as well too. So that does give you some movement there in the base, which is pretty nice. Otherwise, if you wanted some more movement or if you wanted it to be in like more of a dynamic pose, I would probably recommend you guys just uh, make your own base or make some sort of modification to be able to mount this onto like a Bandai action base or something like that. The only real accessories that you have for this kit are these option parts right here. So right here on the chest, those white bits, you can take those off carefully and replace these with a version of that that's made to look like these kind of lights or I don't know exactly what it's supposed to be. There's supposed to be like lights or cameras, some sort of like targeting system there. So you have one for the left and one for the right. Uh, just for now, I'll just show you guys uh, different on each side so you can compare how that looks closed and then open. So you just swap out that piece. That's the only accessory that we have. Otherwise, the accessories are just kind of handheld. Not really sure what this is here on this side, but you can opt to not have that equipped on that side simply by just taking this off. So that's just a, a handheld thing there, plugs onto the back of the arm there as well. The hands are pretty interesting. They aren't necessarily really articulated. You can sort of adjust the angle of the fingers a little bit, but for the most part, they're just kind of fixed posed like that in a kind of weird sort of holding pose. You can also remove the Gatling gun from this side as well. And you can see there's a seam that's just not wanting to close up for me. So I'll have to do some more work on that before I'm able to close up that seam properly before painting. On that note, there is also seams on the forearms. There's seams on these big parts here on the top of the, and bottom of the shoulders. There's seams down here on the feet. And there's also seams on these red parts here on the kind of back skirt, backpack, back skirt, kind of binder sections there. These like flat bits up here on the shoulder don't actually open and close. They look like they might. They're just meant to be fixed like that. You can't fully close this if you wanted to. You'd have to modify that. They're meant to be sort of half open. So it's just so you can see some of the internal detail in there, which is nice. This piece, which just fell off the side of the arm here, is a good point to mention that uh, this kit is not very stable at all. There's a lot of parts on here that are very barely being held on. I haven't glued anything at the moment yet, but there's definitely some parts that are loose on it, and that's going to be the main thing with this kit. The main issue is that there's going to be a lot of glue probably required. You don't need any glue. It's entirely snap fit, so you don't need any glue for anything, but I would definitely recommend gluing some of the parts if you're noticing things falling off. And obviously if you're planning on painting the kit, you're gonna have to glue some of the seams and like that. So the shoulders are just on a ball joint up here at the top. So that's gonna be your main point of movement there for those. You have some rotation here at the top of the arm. And then you have some pretty nice movement here at the elbow that will give you basically a pretty full bend there. So that's nice. The head is a pretty cool design with this kind of like mono eye underneath that clear part. It looks pretty interesting. You can turn that side to side, up to there, down to there, not too much movement there, up and down, but a little bit. The middle section is kind of interesting as this bar here in the center will kind of move along. It's just kind of floating. It's attached to the stomach section and then the bottom part is not actually, actually attached. So it just kind of floats freely and moves along as you rotate the waist, the waist, which is pretty cool. The hip joints like the shoulders are just ball and socket joints. So pretty simple, straightforward there. You got a pretty nice knee bend here, but you're not really gonna need to move the legs all that much. And you can see, there you go. It just popped out as I was moving the leg, but there's a good chance to point out the piston details here. Then not really too sure why, but this part here on the back of the leg will move up and down, kind of slides up and down there you have Hmm, I was gonna say we have a thruster vent up there, but that piece fell out and I wasn't aware of it, but we'll pop that back into place and it doesn't seem like it wants to stay there. So I might need to just go ahead and glue that now because otherwise it's not gonna stay and it seems like, but there's a little thruster vent up in there. And the feet, which are just these kind of tiny little things also have some cool piston details there. But again, as soon as I move that, it just like fell out. So the poly caps, not very good on this kit and it almost would have been better if they would have just made it as just a fixed pose kit I feel like but there is articulation in it if you wanted to have it in sort of more of a dynamic pose you'll probably just going to want to glue some of these joints and make it into like a fixed pose kit as for the massive binders at the back you can basically just rotate them a little bit left to right which is not really all that beneficial for any reason but they do look very cool for some reason this like kind of uh, blade a bit that's sticking out the back on mine. One is very loose and just kind of tends to keep falling down on me, but 
those can be rotated I guess if you wanted to rotate that out like so but again just some great detail up inside there definitely so like I said guys the kit that does have some articulation but it is going to be pretty limited in terms of like the actual pose that you can do with it just because of how it attaches on the stand and the, just the limits to the articulation of it but again as I mentioned before the main point of this kit is that it's meant to look really cool and that it definitely does I do really think it really has this kind of Ferrari look to it that on the surface on like the armor you don't have a ton of detail so you end up with these wide slick red surface Surfaces on the outside and especially you know once you actually go ahead and paint it and gloss coat and everything it's gonna look even better but you have these wide open smooth glossy spaces on the armor and then you have a lot of detail like under the hood so all the mechanical parts of the frame and everything that you can see poking out here and there and like around the back end the thrusters in those uh, booster binders there out the back of it like all the engine detail everything going on there so you have lots of really cool detail that you can go in and again once it's all painted up detailing all that it's gonna look fantastic and just getting a really nice way whether you choose to keep it red or you know you go for a different color or even if you were go to not have it be like a high gloss color but you know whatever color you end up painting on the outer armor I think it makes for a really cool contrast like all the smooth surfaces of the armor contrasted against all the detail going on under the armor so it looks really awesome anyway it's a really cool kit guys let me know your thoughts on it down below have you ever built this kit there is also a white version of this that uh, the equipment's a little bit different let me know if you guys would like to see that I don't have it but I have kind of been interested in getting one for a long time like I said these these kits are not new they've been out forever so this kit I know at this point is probably not very easy to find but if you look around online you should be able to find one I think the list price was 6900 yen when it originally came out so around 60 70 dollars and now that it's a bit rare expect to pay is probably significantly more than that 90 to 100 dollars maybe for a kit like this which for all the problems that it has does seem like a lot but again it's definitely a kit that you're going to want to pick up probably if and only if you're wanting to put in the work to it to really make it shine because i think once it's all painted up and everything it's going to look fantastic and it's definitely one i'm looking forward to working on later but Again, let me know your guys' thoughts down below. Thanks so much for checking out the video today. If you want to check out some more awesome mecha kits, obviously you can check the link down to USA Gundam Store in the video description. As always, check out everything we've got there from Kotobukiya, Bandai, etc, etc. I know you guys would like to also like the video or subscribe. That would also be greatly appreciated. But until next time, hope y'all are having a great day, and I'll see y'all later. Bye, guys.